Hi, I'm Chris James, and you're watching A Healthy Alternative. Today, I have a very special guest. And I always say I have a special guest, but today I have a very, very, very special guest. Um, this is a friend of mine, and we're kind of colleagues in the whole wellness scene. And we've been looking to collaborate for a while now. Uh, she has a, a company. Um, she does wellness consults. She is into um, ideology. Iridology. I, I, Iridology. <laughs> can't mm -hmm. ever say that. That's fine. Uh, um, I mean, you, you, she does a little bit of everything. So I'm really excited to present her to the audience and uh, get her information out there. And then also we're going to talk about her wellness, her personal wellness journey. I think what makes people the, the best healers is them actually having to go through a struggle themselves and uh, it produces these amazing healers. So we're gonna get into all of that today. So stay tuned, Felicia is with us, Fifi the Gypsy. <laughs> we're gonna get into all of that right now. Coming up next. We're missing a piece of the puzzle. You start getting healthy and you just become a better person. We need to start focusing more on the individual. Okay, Felicia, finally, we're finally here. I'm so happy to have you. I know. It's been like two years since we've been rapping on the phone and everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, starting, starting this, uh, this wellness brand and, you know, meeting people such as yourself has been amazing for me. Yeah. Having those connections and, and building that network. Um, yeah. I love that we're able to collab and uh, yeah. do this. So let's rewind all the way to uh when this when you started developing issues in your own personal journey um how old were you what were you struggling with and and what kind of sparked you know where you are today yeah that's a good question chris first of all thank you for having me here like i feel honored and excited to be here you guys hi <laughs> But as um, far as my journey, yeah, when I was younger, <clears throat> first I had a sister, um, and I grew up in the adoption foster care system, everyone. So I had an adopted sister who had diabetes. So that was a first health trigger for me, just observing her journey, um, being diagnosed with diabetes and seeing what she was going through. And then when I hit my teenager years, um, I started getting headaches and getting like dizzy spells, those types of things, allergies, really, really chronic allergies where I couldn't enjoy the spring and sometimes summer and fall, mm. um, you know, given that I would have sinus infection, always um, itchy, runny nose, rubbing my eyes like it was no one's business, all types of things. And um, i trying to think what else. Like I... I pretty much, you know, during that time, allergies wasn't a well-known thing. I think that's when, you know, our generation were, I guess, given the whole vaccine situation, which I'm not going to go too far into that. <laughs> um, but, you know, our generation, um, we got the va we got more vaccines. We were the first uh, right. generation that got a lot of vaccines considered, you know, back when. And so, you know, that's when allergies starts to be more... Uh, popular and it took some time for it to be accepted and to, you know, be acknowledged that is it is a thing. So I, I suffered with that as a child. Um, I've I wound up being an athlete in high school. I was running track. I'm a track star, yeah, I guess the name you would call call it. Um, and during that time, I found out I had asthma, <laughs> um, and then I also found out um, pretty much shortly. I was like 15. I pretty much had a tumor in my breast. Um, wow. That scared the freaking <laughs> daylights out of me. Um, and that fear um, kind of led me into changing my diet, you know, and then my coach to, you know, was anti Gatorade and, um, you know, not eating donuts, um, stuff like that to minimize that type of food. Um, so given that, my own personal experience that's kind of where i started my quest you know mm. i had a doctor who put me on um because i had migraines as well so i'm an athlete 
hey, the migraines, you know, my vision, so bad where my vision was, um, my peripheral vision was like knocked out when these migraines would come. Wow. So, you know, I was like 15, 16 driving in my car and now I can literally only see like right in front of me and everything else is blinded. And so um, she put me on drugs, you know, and next thing you know, I pretty much was getting them more often. Like, so I was like, okay, obviously this drug is not helping me. <laughs> and so um, I was looking at the side effects. I was scared of the side effects, suicidal, all this other stuff that was on there. I was like, no, thank you. So I wound up not taking the drug and um, just trying to eat more salads, eat less processed foods. You know, as much as I knew back then, that's what I did. Right. Um, during that time, I did get surgery to get the tumor in my breast out. It was not a cancerous, thankfully. Oh, but, yeah. you know, the, I guess because I'm young, but if I, you know, continued down that path, I mean, I wouldn't be short from that, given that in college, you know, years later, uh, my both my grandparents on my mother, my maternal side, passed away from chemo. And I, I don't really want to mm. say cancer. I will say chemo. Okay. okay. Um, that's a whole nother thing because they've had cancer for years, but as soon as when they get the treatment, that's when they're, um, you know, it was shortly after they, you know, they passed away. Right. So um, given that that is my hereditary background, you know, I knew, you know, which is a lot of health issues, diabetes, you know, uh, obesity, some, some family members even morbidly obese um, from down South, not saying everyone from down South um, has a poor diet, but you know, the typical family when we're not educated, you know, so it's totally different, um, totally different lifestyle now from where I came from. So that's kind of like my background. Um, what triggered me to become a practitioner was the fear of getting sick and the fear, like having unexplained rashes, eczema, random rashes that would pop up on my body. I would break out in highs for like a week and, you know, all the doctors would give me is med meds, you know, and half the time I'm missing classes in college, not knowing the whole time if only I changed my diet and then, you know, get into detoxification. I don't have to deal with that anymore. And now, you know, I'm in my 30s and I feel way better, more healthier, more self-empowered than I did back when I was younger, because at the time I had no clue what's happening. I was just reacting and responding to everything, you know, like we all do, but you know, so that's my journey (laughs) in a nutshell. (laughs) Well, it's, it's crazy because, um, I think a lot of younger people, teenagers or pre even preteen start having issues similar to yours, go down a very similar path. And it seems like if your parents or even you don't have the wherewithal to know, like when you start taking the drugs and stuff, okay, this isn't really helping. Like you, you kind of start that spiral and it just gets worse and worse. It's like a snowball effect. And then when you get older, you're in your twenties or late twenties or thirties. Now you've got reproductive issues. You're impotent. You've got diabetes. And it's like, whoa, like I've only been here for 30 years. Like, what's the next 30 years going to look like? So um, I think that, I think that you know, it's something that we, we need to really pay attention to our children when they tell us, hey, I don't feel good. I, I have allergies. Like, don't just assume, oh, he's trying to get her going to school or something. You know what I mean? Like, we really need to, to pay attention. Like, what are they eating? What are they getting in school? Yeah, what's changed? Yeah. Right. Because you you mentioned that, at, you know, uh, your generation is pretty much where vaccines kind of started becoming popular and they were starting to get more. I think that I got probably about four, maybe. I can't really remember. But I know now it's what, like 36 or something. I couldn't even tell you. I think it's like. I think it's like 70 and they have a lot more in the pipeline, you know, because what happened was there was in 1980 six or seven, they had a no liability act that was passed. So that means that the corporations that make these are not liable. You can't sue them directly for the damages. And so when you are awarded any money, you are, us tax people are liable. Where mm. our tax money goes to the damaging. I if didn't they know even that. award you. 
yeah yeah this is this is this is a whole i don't even want to speak on that given that the censorship that's happening yes when it comes to this yeah. topic but yeah. in my membership this is stuff we'll go and i, I give documents you know sources all that stuff like because right. it's it's something now that we have to go underground with um but those who seek shall find you know because there's people out here that has the legit information um they they've experienced it um you know i'm in groups where i see you know people the damages that's done <laughs> right um and then and it's, it's that's just one factor unfortunately right it's a huge factor but it's one factor and but given the lifestyle that's being passed on it's weakening our genes that's why we're finding children not as tolerable to a lot of things with these autoimmune issues or they're expediating in these diagnoses or more chronic illnesses do you know what i mean to the fact that like you kind of kick the can down the road mm. you know what i mean far as like you you reproduce you didn't change your life you know lifestyle and so when you're conceiving a child it's the snapshot of where your health is mm. and where the both of y'all health are yeah so even though you may not have no chronic signs when, at the time when you created a child you're still weakening the gene genetic information you know what i mean and then that child is produced from that snapshot of when mm. where you were in health wise right. you know so now they have to and if they keep continue with your path of lifestyle they damage it even more and they reproduce and so the time frame of children getting sick sometimes they're coming out with deficiencies or um de you know being uh deformed or having you know autoimmune issues um they're coming out with these things or they're diagnosed at a really young age you have children that have chemo and all these different things can be healed really right. um because we keep forgetting how intelligent the body is but we also think that we can outsmart the divinity of our design, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's actually really simple, but it's not always easy given that we're trained to be self-destructive, right. you know what I mean? So that is, it's just, it just takes, uh, the willingness to, um, first of all, want something better, <laughs> want to experience something better outside of, um, you know, where your current state of health and your current lifestyle is. And then, you know, taking the accountability, accountability, responsibility, take over your own health, which I love you for doing because that's what you promote. Um, so that's what we're about. I wanted to kind of go back a little bit to there was there there must have been a point when you decided, OK, I'm going to stop taking the drugs. I'm going to start educating myself. And you started moving towards this kind of natural way of healing was there something specific that sparked that? Like, how did that kind of unravel for you? Well, I've always been into health. Just like I said, seeing everyone around me, like, always sick. Whether it was mentally, you know what I mean? All, all just, just sick. Mentally, emotionally, physically, all of it. So, but at that time, I didn't have, you know, the internet wasn't, you know, I know we were the internet babies where right. internet was a thing and we we're taught um, from, but this information wasn't as it is today. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as accessible. Um, there weren't too many people speaking on it. And honestly, I don't even think where we are today. It's just at a different place today. And so when I was in college, um, you know, I had to like, you know, I had no one else to blame when it came to my health, but myself. So all the foods I was eating out, you know, drinking, you know, mm. the things you get into when you're in college. Yeah. And I, I'm not, I'm not, um, an exception. I got into some things in college, um, you know, just drinking, partying, um, pulling all nighters and drinking energy drinks. I started to have anxiety issues start to feel like my heart feel like it's about to fall out my chest. It's like, what is going on with me? Not knowing, obviously I added these habits into my life that were, which I, you know, given my genes, I couldn't afford to just continue that up past. So that's when I was like, okay, not only am I going to do better with my grades and focus more in school and stop all this. So I literally took to like forms and blogs, because before the um, in monetization of the internet, YouTube was a thing. Um, 
and I was on, you know, YouTube. So I cut my hair. I went natural. I got natural makeup. Like I just dumped, you know, I, I learned about the cosmetic stuff. Mm. I did that. I became a pescatarian, um, you know, got a juicer, you know, started transitioning then. Um, and this was even during a time when my, my grandmother was diagnosed, um, you know, with cancer and everything. So that even gave me more fire to continue, you know, more fuel to continue down this path. Um, and then what happened was when she had passed away, I like, I knew it was the chemo because when I met her, even not met her, but when I went down there to see her in the hospital after she already got treatments, couldn't recognize her. You know, and I was like, okay, so she, apparently she had cancer for all these years, right? Cause she's in, she's in like stage three or four, right? So she lived with it for years and she looked fine, right? But now that y'all put her in this, what do you call it? A treatment. Um, she, she looks like death. <laughs> like what she, her, her skin pigmentation, her vibrancy, the life force, everything that made her who she was, wasn't there anymore, you yeah. know? And so that was traumatic. <laughs> and um it was eye-opening so I went and took to the internet to like I, I was like I know it's chemo so I, I literally I just knew it you know because mm -hmm. I was like I don't I don't you know we say it's, it's it's cancer cancer and then that's another thing cancer is usually a symptom it right. doesn't have to take you out <laughs> so when people get that c word they're just like oh, I'm doomed ah. well that's how they want you to feel right because that's how they scare you into now we can roll you and do this, do do that till you do this. They, they just they give you all the salute. They give you the fear and then they give you the solution all in one. So you get time to get over the fear factor mm. and, and think on like, okay, I'm going to, how did I get, how did I get here? How did my body get here? And there are little signs, you know, um, like if you're getting six boil cystic acne, you know, those, that's one, you know, sign that your lymphatic system's stacked up. If you're, um, you know, it's so many symptoms is so much before we get to that point. Right. Um, but we we're not trained to um, be in tune with the body on that level. But anyway, so going back to my grandmother being sick, this is when I fell into Robert, uh, Robert Morse and his mm. teachings. At that time, I thought he was a loony, but a good loony. Like <laughs> he was just really extreme compared to me where I thought I was, you know, and then I also, I also fell into, or came across, uh, Tuhuti Ma'atrat. He pulled himself off the mainstream internet, but he is, um, you know, I think either African descent or African American out in LA. And he had an herbal company and I, that was the first raw, that was my first experience eating raw and doing a raw diet. So, mm -hmm. I jumped into that, but it was only for like 21 days. It wasn't, he wasn't pushing like you eat like this all the time. Right. But Robert Morse was, he was like, like nah, I eat, eat like this, you know, <laughs> right. he was just, the, the delivery of the message was different. And so at that time I wasn't there to fully accept that information. Okay. You no, know, cause I, I wasn't even there for it myself. I was there trying to find chemo and I stumbled across Dr. Morse talking about cancer and how to heal from it and also the chemo industry he was cussing them out <laughs> and so that was years ago and um that's kind of where i started you know and then i just i was so addicted to that information but right. given that i didn't have any i did i changed enough where and that's another thing is the difference between treating versus healing mm -hmm. i changed enough where i wasn't having any chronic symptoms so right. I didn't have an urgency to eat the level of how I'm eating today you know right. what I mean so for me I kind of teetered there while I just just digested the information and was just processing it and I played with you know eating that way and I noticed the difference I noticed how more vibrant my energy would be you know mental clarity all of it sleeping better but you know life happens so sometimes you got to keep getting kicked in the ass a few times. <laughs> Life will kick you. That's for sure. And it'll, it'll, it'll push you to your purpose, especially when you, when you talk about like manif manifesting things, you say things, you'd be like, you know, one day I want to be a successful business person or, you know, I want to own this. And it's like, oh, well, something is listening to you and 
with that with that powerful manifestation, it will start pushing you towards that, whether you like it or not. And it's not always the path that you necessarily want it to be. You know, it's what you need. The skills, the talent to just give you the ingredients so you can, you know, get what you ask for. Yeah, exactly. Or be what you ask for. Yeah, well, and that's and that certainly has been happening to me. So I, I'm a I'm a testament to it. But I've learned to l- like roll with it. Just go with the flow. Don't think of things as good or bad happening. It's just part of the journey. Yeah. And that's yep. As you guys see, like making your holistic holistic journey easier because yeah. um you got people like us that's here because we've we've been there and the more you ask the universe for things the more you're going to get exactly what you ask for that's why they say be careful yeah because you have to be open in the way that it comes because it may not like you said it may not come in the way that you envision it because first of all it's preparing you for something way bigger because i think what's inseated in us is coming from a higher space anyway like we think that we're leading ourselves like i want to do this i want to do that but really it's it's like part of our soul contract here you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and so we we kind of go through some things like you know i don't think it was uh, a coincidence that you're in health i'm in health you know what i mean and like you know seeing how you even you know help your family members get to this point you know what i mean and health that's here's the thing you guys health is a journey you know a lot of people think (laughs) there's a stop stopping point it's a continual journey so but it i think it does get easier in the sense that when we when we start our journey we're like chronically ill we got all this disease and whatever and it certainly gets better so it sounds like oh what's the point if it's never going to end and i always gotta no it's not like that it just gets better you know it gets better and the thing is you have to like okay when we say health, health is, well, this is just my perspective because I understand everyone has different ones, but, you know, I look at it from a holistic perspective. So mentally, emotionally, and physically, right. um, and, and spiritually, of course, that's the fundamental, but health is pretty much you maintaining balance in your life on a mental plane, on a physical, um, and emotional and spiritual. Right. So you, that's what health is, you know what I mean? And there's no separating like mental health that I guess, you know, you, right. you, we try to separate it, but it's, it's interconnected and that's what holistic is about. Um, and so health is you, you get to a point where you may master your physical, but then you, you're still dealing with the emotional and mental side right. of health because every day you're interacting with people who are affecting that, mm-hmm. you know, and we're humans and we're interconnected period whether you like it or not we're always being bombarded with people energies and when we're interacting with them that's affecting us so and then what we watch yeah another thing what we consume who we're around how we talk the language the thoughts so yeah that's why when i say health is the journey so the physical part that that can be a catalyst for everything else right. you know and when i'm dealing with clients they usually um come to me for a physical, but then it ends up going into spiritual or it has to mental. Yeah. Because yeah. usually those are their blockers yeah. to, to get to their physical goal, you know? So when, okay. When you say blockers, I'm curious for you in, in, in your health journey. Um, have you, have you got to any points where you felt like you reached a plateau and you couldn't go any further? Like, have you had any major difficulties in any aspects of your wellness journey? Many times, you guys, like, I'm not here to act like I'm some perfect person. This was just, oh, easy. It was a breeze. Um, My Mars is in Aries. So when I am inspired to do something, I try. uh, When I know better, I do better. I'm ready to start immediately. Like, you know, Aries is just, "Ah, let's do it now. Mm -hmm. So that's just part of me when it comes to that. But um, like far as consistency, I'll mm-hmm. start immediately, but then it'll, it'll get to, like you say, a point where I realize for me, <clears throat> um, 
you know, like some things may emotionally and mentally pull me away because I might be going through, you know, some relationship problems, you know, different things, you know, it depends on what stage we're talking about my life, but, you know, or get caught up in achieving so much physically that I decide to just throw away the spiritual and the mental training that I need to Mm. continue to do to ground me, you know, so I can be whole and present in everything I do. So now I feel like I'm at a place um, and it's a still constant dance, finding the rhythm to life because the rhythm of life is always changing for you depending on your season. So if like right now I'm actually meditating daily, I listen to positive videos, um, whenever I need to just get charged up, um, or just to help train the subconscious mind. We do affirmations with our children nightly, um, you know, to, to work on that, but so that, you know, so all together we do affirmations, um, daily, um, for the most part, we have, we do have our nights where we're just like, I'm too tired, (laughs) (laughs) but for the most part, we, we've been routinely creating a routine out of this to do devotions, you know, to build the spiritual and the mental muscle for life. So, and I found that since I've been doing the emotional and mental work, um, because I've had periods of time when you, you go through these, you know, they call it the dark night of the soul or shadow work. They have different names for it, but it's pretty much where you're so caught up in the mental space or the emotional space of like, and you hit a wall mm-hmm. and that's when you're just, you kind of fall away. I've had many times where I fell away from, you know, I got in a relationship and I was a uh, pescatarian plant-based back when, before this was uh, even a, a, a name for it. Right. Cause now we use the word plant-based back then it was just all vegan and even vegans sound extreme. Now it's more um, socially acceptable. Right, mainstream. Yeah. Right. And you have more options to eat. Not all those options are healthy, but anyway, <laughs> um, when, I was, you know, I, you know, I fell off and um, tried to interact with people who weren't on the same wave. And I felt myself falling into their habits. Yeah. And, you know, that's where I, you know, picked up weight and I was just now I was like, wait, whoa, where am I? You know, so (laughs) I had to catch, collect myself back, you know, and, um, you know, life happens. And, and like you said, it, it will kick you in your ass if you're not, you know, you're trying to take a pause from your path. But at the sense you've already asked the universe, asked the creator <laughs> for right. which, you know, so it's like, nah, I'm going to put you back here. And yeah. something dramatic has to happen to get you here to there, you know. Mm-hmm. So for me, that, you know, was a tumultuous relationship um, that I had to experience to, um get me back to, yeah. you know, having people in alignment that's, that's going to, where we're like reflections of each other, um, encouraging each other to continue on this path. So there's only so far you can steer away from your path with the people I have right now in my place. You know what all I mean? Right. So we all so, go through that, but um, yeah. So you would say that you're, support system through through this process has been very important whether they supported you and you know uplifted you or whether they kind of dragged you down it's not even just simply about you you got to be careful about who you're around yeah Yeah. we have a lot of enablers and a lot of people who trigger us which just creates a loop of perpetuating the things that we're trying to get out of and so Sometimes it's a change of environment, meaning sometimes, you know, physical or um, just, you know, just having some time alone. I've I've spent a lot of time alone to fully hear myself and hear my, you know, soul, my, 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 the being the part of me that's connected to a higher calling to be able to hear that and to nourish and learn to hear it clearer. So when I am around people who's used to putting and accepting their thoughts in you, you can stay focused on Mm -hmm. what you really want and how you want your life to go and not keep falling, getting sidetracked with everyone else and their input, you know? So it's a balance, you know, it's, it's a fine balance. And, um, 
yeah. So the people like my, you know, my husband's very um, encouraging, I actually encouraged him. <laughs> he, he wasn't into health, but he was into the, the journey. Mm -hmm. And when you're just committed to the journey, everything else kind of falls in line. And so, you know, he, he's, he was committed to the journey. So eventually he fell in line with the health. And, you know, like I said, it's a continual learning experience. There's so many, you, it's like, you think, you know, but then do you really know? Cause <laughs> the infinite, um, I don't know. There's so much out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the possibilities and how far you can go with things and the healing, you know, you were telling me, you know, your journey with the healing and, you know, some of the things you want to do. It's fun. It's fun to see how far can we go with this? You know what I mean? Let's play with it now. Now right. that we know we got the basics down, let's play. <laughs> right. It's like, it's like we're so caught up in, we're like under the jail right now. We're sick. We're depressed. We, you know, mental, we are foggy. We can't do the minimal. So then once we get to a place where we can at least pull ourselves up out of that, it's like, now you can even see the sky. And you could see how vast the, the opportunities. We live in a supernatural world. And there's so much to learn and explore and understand. And it's like, once you take that veil off, it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, let's find out what this is all about. So um, I'm curious, like right now, so you, you're, you're, you're doing really well. You're, you're teaching and helping other people. What are some of the things that you're teaching them as far as like dietary strategies or, you know, what are some, what are some big um, issues that people tend to have and, and how do they kind of circumvent those? Hmm. A common one is anxiety. That's just something, it's just normal. And that's something I've, I've suffered with a lot. Anxiety, um, fatigue lethargic, feeling sluggish, getting sick often. Um, those are just basic things, you know? Um, and that's enough for people to be like, mm. I'm just over this. Yeah. You know what I mean? As far as their mental health, even depression. Um, depression, getting moody, cranky, heading, insomnia. Those are real common. Yeah. And these are more, more acute issues. They're not, you know, the chronic stuff. I've had clients who is healing tumors, shrinking tumors, detoxing tumors. Um, they're almost done with that. Okay, so for one, one is actually intermittent fasting. Um, you know, you talk a lot about fasting here on your channel. And fasting is just, you know, just like you go to work. You don't want to be at work 24 hours. Neither <laughs> does your body. <laughs> you don't want to be to work more than eight hours a day. Neither does your body. So if you can squeeze in eight hours you know what I mean? Window of time where you give yourself to eat and then everything else, your body's able to, first of all, digest, let alone digest the food, but properly, you know, utilize, um, eliminate, do the other, you know, processing it usually does when you consume, you know, food. Right. Um, I'm trying to think what else. So that's, that's usually something that can prolong your life. Just if you just incorporate that. Um, so the typical window is like from 10 to 6 for um, people to have that as their window to eat. And we usually can customize it depending on who's, where, their lifestyle and everything. But that's the typical window. And then another one is breaking your fast. So obviously when you're not fasting, you're slowing. <laughs> <laughs> the play with words you guys but um so obviously if you're not fasting you're slowing your energy and your frequency down your body um so when you break your fast and you're you know consuming fuel food um fuel uh you want to eat foods that are more electro has more electro energy mm -hmm. so you want to eat foods that is not cooked <clears throat> um so you know the best, I say the best is fruit because not only does it hydrate you, which helps cleanse and wake up the cells, right? Um, with the nutrients, minerals, the flavonoids, five, you know, all the, all the, I guess the antioxidants, all the things that fruit comes with, right. as well as the, um, water that's able to penetrate 
on a cellular level. Mm. So this is a really good way to wake the body up. And also too, just with food combining alone, you want to eat your fruit um, at the top of the morning or you know, when you do break your fast and that be your first meal and then eat, if you're going to eat denser meals, eat them towards the evening and not when you're about to go to sleep, but as your last meal of the day, you know? So that is usually like, these are some of the rules when people are like transitioning. Mm -hmm. Um, Some people can just dull right into it. Like I have a client now that literally just start working with her and she's already on her first week raw she loves it she she was on a phone from the first conversation when we first had and was telling her what she you know her elimination plan and then talking to her literally like last night her energy just is like this was her energy yeah. now she's like, yeah. like so she's so <laughs> excited yeah. um and then um i'm trying to think what else um huh those are like the basic things, but like eating more raw foods, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> um, even dry fasting, but that is something that I, I don't just give people or like, Hey, just go dry fast. Like, because <clears throat> most, more people more than likely are de- dehydrated on a cell- mm-hmm. cellular level. Yeah. So I, I don't want to push that and have their organs where they're already yeah, you know I mean, they're already just barely doing what they can right. do. Mm-hmm. And then we just go into a dry fast. So what we do is we hydrate. You know, we do the intermittent fasting. We get to a point where I know that their, their hydration, their stool, as far as their bowel movements. By the way, your bowel movements, you should have at least <clears throat> two to four per day in that range and consistently every day. Okay, so anything less than that, more than likely you're dehydrated. And then two, we already know, like, there's a certain way your bowels should look. They shouldn't be runny and they shouldn't come out, you know, (laughs) where you're barely, you know, moving and they're little stones and hard and dehydrated. So, um, but I try to get clients where they're moving consistently. um, Because even if some clients are pooping twice a day, they're still chronically backed up. That's just due to the food. Right, the food pushing it out. <laughs> right. And so, you know, so we so we work through that and um trying to think what else. Um, I do iridology readings, which that gives me a soft tissue analysis. Um, and I'm able to see the lymphatic stagnation through the eyes. And so it's able to, you know, and the genetic um <clears throat> the genetic constitution the strength of the genes that's already passed down um people who have weaker genes may take longer and take less time to get something really severe like cancer or you know what i mean um people who have like a cholesterol ring actually let's see this is coming up clear like people who have like cholesterol rings that is when you can be prone to like strokes and heart attacks Oh. So like I can literally see if you're on the path of about to have, you know, um, you can see malabsorption through the eyes. Um, there's people who have malabsorption, so it, it doesn't matter how you physically look. You can even be obese and still have malabsorption issues. Mm. Um, this is due to the coating of toxins sitting in the colon and it's coating where the nutrients can't um be absorbed you know so absorption issues um which obviously if you're not absorbing things it has to pull from other areas of the body right um which i say the body is kind of like a symphony because you know if something's out of tune some, the other side has to make a make up right. mm-hmm. you know and that's that's the play of the body it's it's all you know it's beautifully designed mm-hmm. it is not something that <clears throat> we should be disgusted or ashamed of. It's amazing. Um, if you have body odor, that's a telltale sign that you need a detox. If you have gunk in your eyes, mucus in your throat, if you are getting sick, <laughs> these are all signs, like even just getting a cold, because I think like 46% of our DNA is viral. So when people are talking about this virus scare, that's just a whole nother thing. Our body is created to collect 
the bacteria and viruses of the planet and you know what do they call it um adaptation you know and that's that's just a whole nother thing but the point is um your body won't be able to express any virus if your terrain is clean. So if the right. body's clean, you can get a virus and it, and it won't um, express itself because it doesn't have anything to make it active as um, far as it, you know, expressing itself as we know it to be. No, uh, <laughs> the, the, um, I, the, I, I, the, the, I, Iridology. I, I don't even know if I'm saying it I right. So I'm not even it. here to correct the you. eye science. <laughs> Yeah, it's very interesting to me yeah. because it's something that I looked at uh, maybe a couple of years ago and I started thinking about people saying the eyes are the window to the soul. And of course, I wear, you know, glasses and I'm thinking about how does that affect me and, and you know, how I, I receive energy and things like that. So I think it's really cool. Basically, with this science, what you're saying is you could look at someone's eyes and you could tell if they're having liver issues, kidney function issues, digestive issues, et cetera. Down their pituitary gland, you, you know, you have insomnia, could be your pituitary gland. Um, um, there's just so many parts of the body that you can see in the eye. And so right. I can connect to see, like sometimes a lot of people may have the adrenals, the, um, the thyroid gland off as well, right? But normally the, the pituitary gland is a master gland that affects a few that kind of governs a few other glands so if i see that normally the pituitary gland is the one i need to focus on first um when i do detox people i focus on the adrenal too because the adrenal um governs uh the kidneys right they sit on top of the kidneys and they also affect you know that like i said anxiety is a common thing um given the stressors that we have the emotional physical and mental stress that is constantly you know whether we're um either eating food or, you know, the physical stress of life, our adrenals are burnt out, you know? <laughs> so that gland is, is, a, is, is just a given one that I normally focus on as well as the kidneys because the four channels of elimination needs to be open and normally the kidneys are not functioning, which in iridology, you know, it goes into the lymphatic system, which, you know, Dr. Morse, that's what he preaches. And that's, that's the system that um, filtrates the cellular waste the toxic, you know, so anything that is trying to get filtrated through the system, you know, when you guys have a cold, you know, the mucus, um, that's a part of the lymphatic system. It carries out the acid of the body and it's the mucus is a buffer. So you're not feeling mm -hmm. burning, you know, which sometimes we even feel that, you know, acid reflex, burning skin, psoriasis, eczema, dandra. These are all lymphatic expressions that come, try to come through different um, holes and pores of the body, right. especially when the kidneys are down. Um, so when you're getting tumors and things like that, that's due to the lymphatic system being backed up, right? Um, so, you know, you may go through a phase where you call fibro uh, uh, fibroids or just a tumor or a cyst. These are signs that your lymphatic systems back up. If you have, a, you know, acne, skin rashes, all those different things are just signs the elimination channels are not open. And when you, like I said, have one that's down, the body has to make up for other ones. So you may get skin issues. You may right. have a, it may collect itself and become a mass in your breast, which is what I had. And, right. <clears throat> and collecting your um, uterus. A lot of women who have taken birth control and stopped the flow of their body detoxing, because that's a detoxing period mm -hmm. for women, um, now they're collecting fibroids in their, you know, body and, or, um, you know, they're taking drugs and medicines and things that suppresses right. the body. And you're wondering why it throws the body even further out of whack and create these other symptoms because you're shutting down ways. The body is trying to like gently knock on the door and say, Hey, sweetie, I need help here. I need you to stop eating this food in us right. <laughs> and feeding us this. Cause, uh, look, look, you see, um, I have mucus in my throat or, <clears throat> you know, I have a headache. I have, um, you know, it shows so many gentle signs before we get to a point where it becomes unpleasant. <laughs> so we all really do get grace periods, but right. it's learning the signs and learning how to be in tune with the body is, you know, so I, I do teach. Um, and that's something I intend to do is create content that is going to be something that it can be self-paced, self-learned, like, you know, um, like I've learned, you know, cause it, it took me some time to like, not only 
it's one thing to know it, but to be the information. So now that I'm on the side of now experiencing what it's like to be there, you know what I mean? It's just a whole nother ball game. So, so yeah, iridology, you guys, um, I do intend to create like a course going over it as much like crash course in the future. No time soon. Just, Mm -hmm. just keep that out there. Just throwing that out there. (laughs) Yeah, I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna get you some pictures of my eyes and let you tell me what uh what's what I got. What's what do you see? What do you see in my eyes? What do I see? Because <laughs> like Don't I tell people all the time, I'm I'm not like some perfect wellness guy. And it's like people always think when you're in this position where you're helping others that you're like up here somewhere. I'm I'm right here with y'all every day, learning and you know, growing. And so obviously it's funny how sometimes we disconnect ourselves from common diseases that we don't consider to be diseases like not being able to see well, or, you know, balding or uh, just the signs of old age in general. You know, there's a lot of things that we, that happen to us. We're like, oh, that's just how it is. Sometimes people are born with poor eyesight. Some people bald early some people just their skin's wrinkly it's like you know what i mean so we, and if your skin's wrinkly that's parathyroid and if you're balding that is stagnation in the head you know <laughs> so and that and that's that's actually uh when when i was researching that's what i found the the lymph stagnation right mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what i uh, and and what it does it like you know like for example if you've had parents that had a lot of heavy stagnation in the head it starts to kind of accumulate in certain areas to a certain point where that expression those cells in that particular area is now weakened and then that's passed down and that's why you have you know you know all these different issues that you're right. born with so right. yeah yeah so even though we're born with things it does not mean that we can't address them and i think that's the beautiful part about all of this mm-hmm for example, like my daughter, um, on my um, husband's side, he, you know, they have some, you know, some expressions in the genes that's weakened due to, you know, lifestyle or whatever. So um, our niece, um, she lives on the other coast, on the other side, um, we're on the East Coast here, and her feet is like deformed, right? Or uh, like she has a toe that's not in all like straight it's kind of like that and so our daughter wound up having the same issue um you know because it's passed down genetically um where the the feet area which again i can see that in your eye in your eyes um that that gene is weakened so you know my daughter and her bone structure it's not as you know wasn't as strong so what we did was put her on a protocol and for, I think, like six months, her feet is just regular now. It went from going like that to that. Wow. And that's all just strengthening. Right. And strengthening, you know. And, and she, you know, she also had, like, autoimmune issues. And we're still actually working with my daughter, given that she's so young. It's a little more challenging on right. being as hard on a, such a small child. But, um, and, I, and I don't say hard, but, you know, cleaning and, and um, strengthening the genes. And so, um, but yeah, she eats high vibrational food. We've seen a huge difference, you know, the, the, just to see the physical foot go from this, you know, where it's not in alignment to right. straighten out like that. Come on, you guys. Yeah. Like, you know, that's called regeneration. This is when you're, you can strengthen genes that you're even um, handed down, you know? So mm. um, you even have people... You know, Dr. Jensen is um, the father of iridology um, or or known as the father in uh, Western America as the father of iridology. I can't say that I'm a a pro in (laughs) all the history of it all, but I know some. And um, I'm trying to say this. He is pretty much, you know, he talks about the lymphatic system. He talks about um, he discovered, like, for example, and even seen this with my husband, too, um, in his eye or when he saw an owl that broke their wing, they had, you know, damage in their eye. Like he saw literally the eye change, you know, Mm. so you could see the state of health through the eyes 
And my husband, he got in a car accident. He messed up his back. We had to take him to the chiropractor, but he had like, you know, I could see it in his eyes. I saw his eyes change. I was like, oh my God. You know, he had this red mark in um, the scleris of the eye, which is the white part of the eye. Um, and but we had, he had chiropractic sessions, it went away. Mm. So it's, it's there to kind of reflect, just like, you know, you get skin rashes and different things. Your body is constantly communicating with you. Right. You're, you're burping, you're getting gases. These are subtle telltale signs about what you're doing to it in, in the chemistry, because really we're just all chemistry. chemistry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, so it's just about balancing on how you, um, you know, I want to say alchem, al- not alchem alkaline but alchemize the body you know so not just acidic eating constant acidic foods creating acidosis in the body thus creating inflammation stiffness you know what i mean because even like dr morse even he was able to heal people i say able because he's now teaching he's not taking on clients anymore but he's even healed people quadriplegics he's healed people with um ms um dementia all these different things you know what I mean? These mm. things can be healed. Um, I didn't say cure, just a disclaimer. And I don't cure or diagnose or practice medicine, but um, be able to get the, encourage the body to heal. You know what I mean? Because right. the body, like right now, we're breathing, we're eating. You know, like what I'm saying, we're breathing, our heart is pumping, our eyes blink. It's an intelligence. It's not something that is just out here acting wacky for no reason it's reacting to what's been what's been happening to it and so it's it's we were born with these things so why do we even think that something that came from it like that was vented by it can be better than <laughs> than be better than the original prototype if that makes any sense wow. so yeah. you know if you look at that when it comes to man's medicine it's like okay the same intelligence that run the body that created the body first before you were able to grow like when you you're a baby you're not you're not thinking about the um m equals square like you're not thinking on that level so what i'm saying is like how do you think you know man's mind is fun to play with but it's also dangerous if that makes any sense you know because the delusion of trying to outsmart ourself (laughs) and a design you know, the body and the archetype, it's created this way for a reason, you know, and it does everything and it gives you enough time to turn back the hands of time for yourself as far as the path that you may be taking. If, you know, you want to experience what Dr. Morse calls Hellville, continue and eat, you know, do your thing, do what you're doing and continue not to listen. And, you know, um, but if you listen to your body and if you listen to people like us who are there just to, just to give you that encouragement and reminder and to let you know it, it doesn't have to go down that way, you know? So yeah, yeah. I ramble you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I wanted to make sure that number one, we got, got, uh, did you have any more points that you wanted to, um, kind of bring up? It's worth the investment, investing in yourself. You know, that's something I I just definitely want to push because, you know, we all are out here so busy. I need to get my money. I need to get my money. But what about your health? When your health goes down, as you've seen people such as, um, what is it? The guy that even created Apple. Yeah, Steve Jobs. Yeah, he's, come on, you guys. Like, what I'm saying is health is worth an investment into, you know what I mean? Because you can go all the way there and then still suffer. And we have a lot of that happening, you know? And so, I don't know. We, we can buy Christmas gifts and throw our money at all this other stuff. <laughs> we don't celebrate it here in our house. I'm actually a Christmas baby. <laughs> but yeah. oh, that's a whole other thing. But if we can put that money, tax money, all the stuff, and put that towards empowering and educating ourselves when it comes to self-healing, because this is like a cup that never runs empty, you know, especially the knowledge and when you apply it, because it's something that literally can save your life, your children's life. And if your family's willing to listen to you as well, their life, you know, because a lot of people are inspired 
by people close to them. But, you know, sometimes they have to lead them to people like us, of course. You know, but regardless, investing in your health is important. That's, it's just the top priority here in our health, in our household, um, because everything else wouldn't be a great experience if my health is not um, in a good state, you know? A hundred percent. And it's, it's sad when people say things like, oh, that costs too much or, oh, I can't afford that. But, you know, it's funny. Like somebody said, you know, it's expensive cancer. I got I, I had a member post a picture of their uh, chemo bill. It was like, I don't know if it was a, a, the pills or treatment. It was like ten thousand dollars. And that's per month. So cancer is expensive. Not going to the grocery store and getting fresh fruits and vegetables. Like, Healthy is expensive. And we're not even just looking at monetary value. You're looking at the suffering that it caused. You're looking at time off from enjoying life and experiencing living, right? I mean, you can literally experience a whole new paradigm when you're in a different state of health. You know, and that's something that I don't know if that that encourages people, but it's just on a whole nother level. You know, um, the energy, the clarity, the mental well, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, my, if you're looking at money wise, <laughs> we, we put gas in our car. We wash, I like, I've seen people out here, even in our neighborhood, they're out there obsessing over their cars, nice rims, washing their car constantly. I'm just thinking like, how, when was the last time you washed your body in detox mm. so fast? You know what I mean? When did you give your time and you're giving all that energy to your body, but yet we're trained to put like makeup on, shape wears, get surgery, you know, um, get a nice fresh haircut, even put dye in our hair, all these different things to make us look like we're healthy. Right. Let's actually work on really being healthy. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you really realize all this material stuff. Um, that's icing on the cake, but it's literally icing on the cake. You want to first work on the cake, the, the actual main thing, which is right. your health, you know, because at the end of the day, know how, how spiritual you are or how mentally intelligent or how successful, or how much money you have. Like I said, your health is not right. It could take you down. All that doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> like, you know, so you I don't know what you mean when you say it's not affordable. It's not, it's expensive. You have to change your mindset. Yeah. Not being healthy or being out of alignment is ex more expensive. <laughs> in every single way yeah absolutely yeah. so all right well um i want to get make sure that everybody gets your information whether you have a website uh, instagram a youtube or youtube or facebook like let's put all your information out there and i will also include links to everything in the description box so that you know people can find you yes yes um first of all Again, thank you, Chris, for having me. Thank you. I appreciate this so much to um, let me use your platform to share, you know, my perception and my, t you know, my, my teaching, my methodology on how I, um, I guess, deliver the same message you're delivering. It's awesome um, message. Yeah. And um, I am at Fifi, the holistic gypsy.com. And that is, um, a membership website is only seven dollars to join. It's a private membership um, because we do talk and we um, I'm uploading content. I'm still working on it. Um, I actually just launched it like a month ago, but yeah. still working yeah, on it. But pretty much, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, where you have downloadable, you know, documents, you can have um, content PDFs. So when you become a basic member, you have access to that and we'll have like videos. Um, and that's a one-time fee. So that's just to lock us into the private domain life and also to help pay the overhead of the website. <laughs> okay. And so, yeah, but there's different packages and stuff like that on the website for coaching, monthly coaching. Um, there's herbs and things of that. Um, I would advise people to first get a consultation before you just jump in and get into the whole, you know, I'm taking this, I'm taking that mode. I, I don't encourage that. Um, we want to make sure you're using the botanicals, the right ones that you need to be more efficient with your healing journey. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on Instagram, Fifi, the holistic gypsy. Facebook is tripping. They won't let me change my name. So <laughs> it's my old name, Felicia Naturally Unique. 
which is Definitely. fine. They should every six months. I think they are supposed to let you change your name. This is why I have a private club, you guys. So you know, I'm free to do what I I want. Right. <laughs> This has been very, very amazing. I'm, yes. I'm happy that we finally got to do it. And yes. I, I certainly wish you well on your growth of your company. Thank you. And all the endeavors. We're going to be um, working together too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, we'll, we'll yeah. definitely find some stuff to do. And we, we're, we're, that's, that's the mission is to get not only the message out there, but just to have places for you to go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Everywhere. Yep, everywhere. There, there shouldn't be, you know, and then a diverse representation and balanced representation, wink, wink, when mm-hmm. it comes to us being in this field. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I'm proud of that. <laughs> all right. Well, if you all enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, the application of knowledge is power. And I will see you all next time. Peace.